Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, thank you very much for tuning into my channel. So today I will be talking about Sudan. I've done one previous video about Sudan a couple of days ago and as I get more information it just keeps you know surprising me about the things that uh, that I had no idea about about things that you know I don't think a lot of people in the world even have an idea about and it's it, it's really unfortunate so with the research I've done I realized that Sudan has been fighting this war for over eight years you know it goes way back to eight years when you know the um, um, Arabian Sudanese didn't want to work with the African Sudanese so you know they decided to just cleanse the African Sudanese you know their villages were burnt their wives were raped their kids were killed you know they were bombarded and this was in Darfur and with the research I've done um, I keep getting a keyword a particular mili militant group called the Janjaweed and you know the Sudanese government always deny that they had any affiliation with the Janjaweed but you know with much more evidence and you know much more research I've realized that the government of Sudan has been working with the Janjaweed all along and I think the whole international community had you know uh, an idea about that as well and you know so right now with you know the revolution happening in Khartoum in Sudan you know the Sudanese people they've put up with so much from this government they've endured so much hardship and I have to commend them because it's it's I find it very courageous that after fighting this you know fight for over eight years they didn't give up they were pers per uh, persistent even though the international community completely blocked them out because why haven't we really heard about this all this information is just resurfacing just because of the killings that happened on the 3rd of June and although the Sudanese revolution was successful right now they are trying to you know fight for democracy now they're trying to fight for civilian rule and the crazy part about all this is the general who was the uh, who was Omar Al Bashir, which was the former president of Sudan, he is an enforcer. His name is um, Lieutenant General Mohammed Hamdan. He was part of the his troops were the one that you know murdered you know thousands of protesters in Khartoum just weeks ago, and this same general was also involved in the killing in the genocide of you know in in Darfur this man has been accused of you know war crimes crimes against in humanity and the most the saddest part about all this is lieutenant general mohammed hamdan is now the successor right now he's in charge he's the there's something called the uh, a D Fecto um, ruler, and that is who General Mohammed is right now. He's he was the enforcer to Omar Arbus. So right now, even though the Sudanese people, you know, fought with everything they have, it's almost like they're back to square one. Because at the end of the day, it's still the military that controls everything. You know, it's still a dictatorship because the Sudanese people want to vote they want to have democracy but because all of because of the weapons that the military has and because they've shown that they're not afraid to use it on civilians you know it, it's really hindering the sudanese people from you know economic prosperity and uh, the united nations even though they seem like they're helping but to be honest it's almost like they're just there to document what is happening they're just there as protocol because in my opinion they should be able to do more than what they're doing and that's just my personal opinion you know and it's really it's really sad to me it really baffles me that this whole situation in Sudan starting for the killings in Darfur 
to the killings in Khartoum that we just recently heard about. This is this has all been a, a long, you know, chain chain of events. You know, it was it was one thing to another thing to another thing. You know, I mean, the the, the condition that the Sudanese people are living in is just horrible. You know, it's just not acceptable. It's bizarre. Because even though Sudan is also a developing country, we all get that. Countries in Africa are still developing. But I think the whole world, we understand now that it's not about developing countries. It's not about that. It's the people that in charge of those developing countries. They hinder their own citizens, their own country, their own homeland from moving forward because of greed. Everything that is happening in Sudan right now is because of greed and it's because of power. Because why would a general who is supposed to protect his citizens, you know, open fire on them, you know? And these were peaceful protesters. It amazes me how someone that, you know, has been accused of war crimes can be allowed to be the current ruler of the same nation that they are trying to, you know, ruin. Because that's what these generals are doing. That is what the military is doing. Because at the end of the day, this Lieutenant General Mohammed Haddam, which I, with, you know, I heard that he's, um, he's generally known as Hamid. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that properly. I hope I am. So... You know, his troops are going to do whatever he tells them to do. And his troops, you know, raped thousands and thousands of women. You know, they killed innocent people. They destabilized so many Sudanese people. You know, look at the state of Sudan right now. I mean, look at the condition the women, the kids have to live with. Imagine that being your day-to-day life, not knowing if you're going to survive tomorrow, not knowing how you're going to live, you know, watching all your family members die right in front of your eyes, and you being powerless to stop it. You know, that is what life is like for the people of Sudan at this moment. Yeah. And it's just, it's really... It's really sad, honestly. That's the only way I can put it. You know, even though I know that, you know, what can I do? What, what can I do to help? At this point, it seems like the only thing I can do for my end to help is to research and to document it. Make sure that history remembers it. Or even if they don't want to talk about it, but it is documented. It's going to be there forever because it's really important it's really important it really is I mean I just feel like the, the, the people of Sudan this is you know the most you know, difficult time of their lives I mean the most difficult and yet they're still trying to pick themselves up they're still trying to make their lives worth it, you know? They're still trying to live every day as it comes. And the world, we've seen so much, you know, of this genocide, of this ethnic cleansing in so many countries all across Africa, you know? And the world just watches. It's almost like, you know, we're complicit. Anyways, guys, subscribe to my channel. I, I will be elaborating more about this later on. But I just, you know, wanted to put this out there and, you know, talk about it. Thank you very much. Please subscribe.